eben gesagt, wir sind nicht mehr zu sehen, aber wir machen trotzdem noch ein Interview mit der Gruppe Creator. Seid ihr schon kaputt oder geht's noch? Yeah, I'm often asked about my own TV show called Heavy Metal Battle that started in 1985 and went on until yeah, close to the mid 90s. So, what can I tell you about this weird thing back in the days? Yeah, it all started when I was a kid and uh, was listening to albums and my little cassettes and uh, I played being a radio host. <laughs> I liked that a lot, so I put on a song, then I talked a little, I even read the news from the newspaper as a uh, yeah, 12 o'clock news or something like that. And I really enjoy that. I always was fascinated by radio and TV, as you can see right now too, and this never changed. So it was in 1985 here in Germany, when there was something new called cable TV. In Berlin wurde heute das letzte der vier Kabelpilotprojekte gestartet. Die Ministerpräsidenten hatten 1976 Dortmund, Ludwigshafen, München und Berlin für fünfjährige Versuche mit dem Kabelfernsehen ausgewählt. Before that we just had regular TV. I mean with the lid with this thing on top of each house. <laughs> Uh, which made a lot of weird noise when the wind came through. Uh, yeah, it was just two main channels and uh, two or three uh, program three things, which were more, more local, Südwestfunk, Bayern 3. So that's what all we had. And I, I was fascinated by at least one show uh, uh, on this old days of TV, and this was called Rock Palast. It was, uh, I mean, Germans of course know that, and um, most of the world knows about it because there's a lot of stuff on YouTube and released on DVD. But this was a live show. It started, I think, at 10 o'clock in in the evening. Mm. Yeah, the bands played in a big venue. It was Essen Gruger Halle, and we were all witness at home from uh, of these shows. It was CZ Top, it was Ted Nugent, it was Cheap Trick. There was a lot of important stuff for me as a kid to watch that, and it was not perfect, but they did the best they could. Uh, some bands sounded horrible in the first two or three songs, and uh, yeah, then most of the time it got better. It must have been a challenge for these people back in the days to create such a program where so many mistakes can happen. And yeah, I love that. It was uh, a highlight of, I think it was at least every half a year or so. And yeah, this was a definite highlight for me when Rock Palace was on. So like I said, in 1985, uh, we got some more TV in Germany. It was cable TV. And I remember that it was called Cable TV Project back then. Uh, we, uh, I was living with my parents in a basement back in those days and uh, in a city called Frankenthal. And Ludwigshafen was the next town and this was where this cable project more or less started in Germany. They had their headquarters there and there was already a studio from the cable channel Sat1, which is still is a big one today. And uh, yeah, they were talking about this new uh, form of TV where regular people are allowed to, to go in there, make their own TV show, or they bring video cassettes uh, with, with the TV show, and yeah, it will be broadcasted. And this uh, project was called OK first, which stands for Offener Kanal, so an open channel for people. But when it was new, nobody knew about it, of course. And uh, there was a, an article about that in the, in the newspaper, uh, Die Rheinpfalz, which my parents uh, were buying all the time. And it said, hey, people, come on, if you want to do TV, and radio, they also had uh, at the same time cable radio uh, was something new. Uh, just visit us and talk to us and then you can do your own TV show. So I was there in 1985. I was 14 years old, already a metal fan. I had some uh, a lot of own albums already, but uh, older friends had even more. So I knew 
I would say a lot about the scene back then. Even I didn't own so many albums because <laughs> I just didn't have the money to buy them all. So I thought, okay, let's do that. And um, I had a schoolmate. He came from Romania. His name is uh, or is and was uh, Rudy. Uh, he, he was uh, he felt a little lost here in Germany and. So for some reason we became friends and I told him if you want to be cool here in Germany be a metalhead and he really enjoyed that music. So uh, yeah, we two uh, went with our bicycles to this open channel OK thing and I can't remember well uh, what happened next but uh, I remember that we started with a radio show. Aus England kommt die nächste Gruppe, nämlich Raven. Sie bestehen aus den Brüdern John und Mark Gallagher und dem Drummer Rob Hunter, alias Wacko. Da es bei Raven live tierisch abgeht, nun aus ihrem Live-Doppelalbum Tyrant of the Airways, zusammengekoppelt mit dem Stück Run Silent, Run Deep, ab. Okay, it's time to oh, it was, and we called it Heavy Metal Battle, of course, because it sounds pretty cool. And, uh, yeah, uh, I think a few weeks later we took some records with us, Rudy's records, my records, and we started doing a radio show and uh, we still have the I still have the first issue of that on a cassette. It's unbelievable. It's totally ridiculous <laughs> because you were so uh, unhappy that nobody calls. In the end someone was calling and was uh, asking for <laughs> At War with Satan from Venom, which is 20 minutes long. <laughs> Yeah, and in the next issue, it, I don't know, can't remember well how the contact uh, came and, and how we get in contact, but I had an interview with Saints Anger. This was a band from uh, a city in, next to Ludwigshafen called Speyer, and they already had an album out on Mausoleum Records called Danger Metal. So for, for me, as a 14-year-old kid, they were real rock stars already. And yeah, we did that radio interview, it went fine. And yeah, this was the moment when we thought about uh, doing a TV show. So there was this huge studio, completely professional for uh, back in those days. And uh, it was run by this channel called Sat1 and by law, by uh, uh, f government, uh, they were forced to uh, spend, uh, to, to, to uh, let people use that studio for some hours uh, each week for this open channel because it was a thing that was run by state so yeah it was totally cool we, I saw all these techniques even the guys working there camera guys sound guys lighting guys everything they had to work for free for two or three hours a week for this channel and they didn't like it too much so I thought, okay, let's try, and I, I talked to the boss of that channel, and I thought, yeah, I would like to do a heavy metal TV show, I li would like to invite bands, you have the technique, you can do all that stuff. I want to do a little rock palast on TV, but for only heavy metal. And uh, he was not really a fan of that idea, but for some reason I got gotten okay. So I got this little contract that I am responsible for that show. But being 14 years old, of course, my parents had to sign that, this document. So technically they own everything. <laughs> my dad could uh, release a DVD the, today with classic heavy metal. Well, uh, yeah. But uh, so the first band we asked, because we already knew them from the radio interview, was Saints Anger. And I, like I said, I can't remember everything, but they came and they played. They set up uh, their, their whole gear with the backdrop and everything. And the sound was pretty, pretty cool. If you compare it to old Rock Palace shows, it's similar for sure. Yeah, and they played, I think, 40, 45 minutes. And uh, it was broadcasted live. 
But uh, as this channel didn't have uh, many shows at that point, you, I think there was an, an, a, a teacher who did some uh, yeah, uh, additional teaching on TV. It was only boring stuff. There was a guy showing off his garden all the time. And, uh, I mean, like on Facebook these days, but uh, on TV. So you were sitting at home watching a guy's garden for two hours. Horrible. Yeah, so they, what did uh, this channel do? They uh, repeated that program. So Saints Anger was on over and over again for some weeks. Uh, whenever you switched on the TV and you reached the OK channel, there was Saints Anger. So it was great. I can't remember doing an interview with these guys in the show. I think Rudy and me weren't even in front of the camera. I'm not too sure here. I just have uh, half of the footage of this Saints Anger show these days. So I think uh, we just let them play. So I can't uh, say which band was next. Uh, you, uh, in the next shows it was always two bands playing. I th even think the next one was the one the people still talk about today, Creator. So, I hope we are now in the so, ist ja auch egal. Also wir haben jetzt hier eine ultra brutale Gruppe hier aus Deutschland. Vergleiche mit Sodom sind wahrscheinlich nicht unberechtigt. So, und wir verabschieden uns auch gleich hier, weil wir nichts mehr hier sagen. Die Gruppe wird jetzt bis zum Ende der Sendung spielen. So, und jetzt noch viel Spaß mit Creator. Uh, I remember that we were talking about another band that I wanted to have in my show. And as Rudy and me, we were big fans of Warrant. Not the Cherry Pie Warrant, but the Speed Metal Warrant on Noise Records with, uh, with The Enforcer. You know these guys. Uh, I think it, it was this band when I called uh, Noise Records. And I think it was a, a female promoter called Marlene uh, back in the days. Uh, I can't remember well, but uh, in the last minute before the show, there was something happening that this band was not able to come. And yeah, but we will send you another band. Okay, so uh, we got Creator. I, to be honest, I didn't know much about them uh, at that point. Uh, they just had out, they had out Endless Pain already, and they were just in the making of uh, uh, Pleasure to Kill. And I said, okay, let's do that. And the other three guys arrived. I think they had a, a roadie with them. I think it was four or five people. All together, and we all because uh, the, the gear needed to be set up. Uh, so we already met in the early afternoon, and uh, I remember that uh, I talked to Miller, and uh, that I, of course, I needed to tell him that I play in a speed and thrash band too, which was some darkness back in those days. Uh, and uh, I, I don't know why we talked about a music store in my hometown called uh, Musikhaus Musikant. And I told them, oh, they have such a cool BC Rich guitar, original American BC Rich. I, thought, uh, uh, I can't remember the, if it was a Warlock or something like that. I think it was a Warlock. And he was totally freaking out because he was searching for this kind of guitar everywhere in uh, his area where he, where he is living. And he didn't find any. So we went uh, to that music store, which was at least a half an hour drive. And I think it was three or four thousand Deutschmarks back then, this guitar, and he just bought it. So, <clears throat> what you, uh, he didn't play it in that show because, uh, yeah, I don't know if he wanted to make some new pickups on or I, I, I can't remember that part, but at least uh, you can see that um, guitar on the, I think the, um, the EP that came, Flag of Hate EP, if you. Uh, on the back side you can see him with this guitar. We both bought this guitar in Frankenthal. Yeah. yeah, when these guys started playing, I thought, uh, okay, <laughs> what the hell is that? Look at the 
They they played faster than they could. <laughs> it was completely. Uh, I mean, in this room, the sound was horrible. So it was just I heard. So uh, uh, when I saw it on TV a little later, then I realized, oh yeah, that's <laughs> fucking cool. <coughs> yeah, but uh, back then I, th I just thought, oh my god, that might be a little too heavy for the people out there. Uh, I remember this one technique guy complaining that uh, the drummer Ventor uh, filled up his bass drum with uh, blankets and all that stuff and that it's just making a moop moop sound. <laughs> it, was, it was a lot of weird moments. Yeah, the other band uh, the, that was playing uh, in the same show, it was uh, two bands then, uh, was Outside, which was another local band for me. Um, they had a 7-inch single out, out called Heavy Metal and the B-side was Action and I saw them live a few times and I really liked these guys. Uh, so we had this, well, one of the first thrash acts from Germany, Creator, and this more melodic hard rock heavy metal thing called Outside in the same show. So it was a really <coughs> um, diverse program, I would say. So, hallo Heavy Metal Fans, wir freuen uns, dass ihr heute wieder bei uns zuschaut. Wir haben heute einige besondere Extras, nämlich zwei Live-Gruppen und die heißen äh, Outside und Creator. Also sehr gemischtes Programm, Outside machen so mehr normalen Heavy Metal, Hard Rock, so melodiös. Und die Gruppe Creator spielt also wirklich ultra brutalen Heavy Metal. So beiden wünschen wir euch viel Spaß. Und die erste Gruppe heute heißt Outside. Okay. Yeah, and uh, outside uh, took this tape from uh, from the TV show and uh, got a deal uh, with that at uh, with Rockport Records, where Trans and other bands like I think Rodgo Monotones were on that already had a deal. So at least it was worth for them uh, uh, to be in the TV show. And yeah, this was the next one. I think, and now I can't say what was first, Backwater Vampire uh, or at Lane. Uh, I, I, it might be at Lane, the, the next, and the weird thing is, and I still have no remembrance of that, uh, on the, uh, it was just at Lane playing in the next uh, issue, even, and I would still understand that, Backwater was there. I mean, Backwater live in Böbling, which is, yeah, one and a half hour at least from uh, from Ludwigshafen, where this show was uh, produced live, all these shows were live. Uh, so there must have been something wrong, so they returned in the next issue when uh, Vampire were there. Yeah, but so it was only at Lane playing and uh, the technicians still were traumatized <laughs> by Creator, I guess. Uh, so they had this great idea. Um, not to mic the Marshall amps, uh, put microphones in front of them, but uh, yeah, uh, it's hard to explain that uh, to non-guitar players. <laughs> I'm not a guitar player too, but there is something that where you can get out of the amp with a cable. I think it's called DI. Uh, but unfortunately, what they didn't realize is that this happens before the guitar gets distorted, before the pedals and all that comes. So what they had was a sound, uh, not the, the fat heavy metal sound, it was a ling, 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 like a, a surf guitar <laughs> or the shadows or something like that. And of course, this was horrible. I, we didn't hear that inside because the amps, of course, did their job uh, in the studio. But what the people here heard outside 
in front of their TVs was just that thin little clack 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 and of course uh, even uh, a great rhythm guitar player sounds like shit when uh, you don't have at least a little distortion so some people thought oh my god these guys are really bad they weren't bad at all it was just the fault of these technicians from this station uh, unfortunately they noticed that when they were back at home watching the VHS tape of their own show uh, because otherwise I think I would have run away <laughs> or something. So we all thought, uh, okay, this was a great show they did and uh, yeah, but in the end this was, yeah, really a bad thing what happens. Uh, and still these days people want to see this Atlane show, even uh, it has such a shitty sound and doesn't represent the band in any way. So yeah, it's cult these days. Yeah, the, the last one in this Sat 1 studio for sure was uh, Vampire and then really Backwater. <laughs> Both bands that I really like. Uh, Vampire came from Gamma Records. Uh, I think back then I just called the labels. Hey, I have a TV show. Do you have a band that wants to play that you want to promote? As a 15 year old, that's really weird. <coughs> Can't even imagine that now. Yeah, but they did. They sent over Vampire. Uh, I got the album uh, for Cry Out for Metal uh, some weeks before and I really liked it. Still love it today. And then there were these nice guys, <laughs> really nice guys, mostly, most have more or less short hair. And I thought, oh my god, they don't look like rock stars at all. And then this image, vampire, and then they... But they changed. <laughs> 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 they put on their spikes and everything. They uh, have had chains that, uh, on stage and all that stuff. So in the end, it was more heavy metal than anything else. And they played a really great show and it's sad that there was never a second album even I know from the guitar player that at least they worked on that but yeah still it was just this one album and I mean more or less the full album was played that night uh, that day that, that evening <laughs> that evening and then came the big chaos backwater yeah, it was Backwater was a band that they didn't get many good reviews on their albums Revelation and Final Strike, I think First Strike or Final Final Strike, their second album. Uh, but I always loved these guys. I loved this raw Motorhead Venom sound, uh, this this distorted bass, and uh, yeah, this yeah unique vocals of both of the guys. Uh, they were singing, and uh, I didn't care if the reviews weren't that good. I just wanted to have this band in the studio, so I contacted A and M Records, uh, which was run by a guy called Ziegler, I think was his name. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and they came already a little drunk. I remember they had this bus from a charity company, company called Aktion Sorgenkind. <laughs> the door went open and beer fell out and the band fell out. <clears throat> we are here, we are backwater. <laughs> yeah, and their show was like that. It was completely intense. They had fun. They set up a drum set. A huge drum set that the technici technicians of uh, that studio again totally freaked out. 
uh, toms and, and uh, tons of cymbals and, and they were for sure the loudest band in the studio. Yeah, and when Backwater were there the first time without playing, by the way, uh, there were still 20 minutes time uh, after the Atlane show and the interview we did. So we did a jam session. So for me, as a 15 year old, it was too cool to sit behind a drum set uh, to play a, a song. <laughs> it was just a blues jam uh, with Atlane and uh, Backwater members. Back then, this was whoa. Great for me, and I'm happy that I found also that footage uh, after all these years. Yeah. So after Vampire and Backwater, we got the, the news that Offena Canal, okay, which was by the way uh, had a huge uh, area where it was broadcasted back then, because this was before every city had these open channels. So it, I mean, when I walked through the city, Frankenthal or Ludwigshafen people realized, oh, that's the guy who's doing that heavy metal TV show. Uh, and I got letters from Hamburg and from Berlin, uh, where people uh, asked me uh, if I can send over a VHS of this or that. So there was uh, a lot of attention back then, because uh, even cable was there, there was still no MTV or the German Viva. Uh, it, it took a while until uh, Tele 5 had their own TV show, Hard and Heavy. So we were at least a little important in that time. So uh, the news to get an old studio sounded good first, but when we saw it, it I mean, it was everything there yes. that you need to do some talking and uh, to, to play videos or something. But uh, live bands didn't seem to, uh, to work there. Oh, and here is with a heavy metal battle. So, wie aus einem neuen Studio, wo man direkt aus dem Keller kommen kann. So was Praktisches haben wir bis jetzt noch nie gehabt. Ich werde mich mal an meinen Platz begeben. Einmal studiobedingt, wie ihr wisst, der offene Kanal ist umgezogen. Wir sind jetzt hier in der Prinzregentenstraße, mitten in der Fußgängerzone von Hemshof. And we start, so we started uh, checking that out with our own band, Sudden Darkness. And we, I think we had five channels and five microphones for a whole band. And of course, this didn't work. We tried again with uh, the grindcore band or whatever it was back then. It sounded like Hellhammer on, or on drugs or so. <laughs> Blood. They were also from Spire, so they were friends of us. So. We, we at least tried uh, two times with the live bands until we noticed, uh, or until I noticed, that makes no sense, it sounds horrible. And so uh, Heavy Metal Battle went on. The first video clips uh, were sent in on VHS tapes by the record companies along with the new albums that I showed up and talked about. And Talish gesehen, uh, from, from, from songwriting here, is this group besonders 
gut Watch in Steel, wie heißt die Platte? Äh, Noble Savage. Wirklich gut. Die haben ja schon, äh, soweit ich weiß, schon noch eine Platte rausgebracht, die ja nicht so gut war. Aber diese Platte lohnt sich echt. Da ist ein Lied drauf, das erinnert mich zum Beispiel unheimlich an Rainbow. Wie gesagt, äh, der Sänger ist etwas gewöhnungsbedürftig, aber könnt ihr mal reinhören, gefällt bestimmt viel. Uh, one of the earliest was uh, the French label Black Dragon sending over stuff. It was for really cool for me as a guy. I still had no job. I was in school uh, and I couldn't afford many albums and I got them all for free then. And I mean, I was always willing to work and talk about them. So <coughs> I don't feel bad <laughs> for that. Yeah, but uh, uh, then we had an idea to lip sync uh, to invite band. Uh, they just play along uh, on a playback and uh, though it looks like they play live and this were tons of bands. It was, I, I, I don't have much of this material these days, but it, it was, I remember Living Death. Toto. Ja, ich bin der Toto und sing. Jo. Und du isst Würstchen und blutest. <lacht> das macht nichts. Ey, das <lacht> It was Pestilence from the Netherlands. <lacht> V2 from Berlin, Angel Dust, uh, when there was their uh, To Dust You Will Decay album, I think it was these days. Uh, um, yeah, it was a lot. I mean, uh, even Ingo Novotny from Metal Enterprises sent over a band. It was just one guy <laughs> with the guitar. It was horrible. Breakpoint, I think, was the name of them. And he was there. So I met the Satan of Using, how, how we call him, because Using was the city he was located. The worst metal company in the world, <laughs> he was there. Yeah, I remember Sabina from Holy Moses was there. A lot of promoters like uh, back then, Alexandra Dury, he, she did a lot for US metal bands like, like Legacy or Forbidden. She brought them to Germany more or less. So yeah, this was also a pretty good time. Outrage sind die japanischen Metallica. Sie haben es geschafft, eine CD auf den Markt zu bringen, die nichts Neues äh, auf den Markt bringt, allerdings total gut ist. Ich weiß nicht, die, die CD landet einfach öfters mal im CD-Spieler, obwohl das einfach nichts Besonderes ist. Aber sie machen einfach sympathische Musik. metal battle it started to look way more professional there was way more content of me doing interviews I went outside with my camera that was uh, that we got for free from this channel Michael Kieske von Halloween und Ingo Schwichtenberg Und da drin stand, dass, dass, dass ihr in den Charts wärt, schon auf, die, auf welcher Platz seid ihr dann mittlerweile? Wir sind von, von 0 auf 34, dann auf 15 Nein. und jetzt sind wir auf 1. <lacht> Hinten sehen wir den Gitarrist, dessen Name im Moment nicht einfällt. Und im Hintergrund hören wir schon das Publikum, dass es gut drauf ist. Er auch. Das ist Marlene und Bobby. Oder Blitz, die ah, das ist belebte Kameraführung. Und uh, uh, to do interviews with huge bands, Men of War back then. And so it was unbelievable. And yes, but usually. Uh, it's always something coming that uh, get, is bigger than what you do. <laughs> and there was MTV at one point, for sure, with uh, Headbangers Ball. Then we had uh, uh, Hard and Heavy on Tele 5 was the channel with Annette Hopfenmüller. 
uh, Sabina from Holy Moses, I think later Götz Kühnemund from Rockhart today, Death Forever did Mosh. I can't remember the channel, I think it was RTL2 or something. So we became we uh, became the small the, the small local TV show. Even we were yeah more important before. And this was the point when uh, when I thought about stopping that. Hallo erstmal. Wir befinden uns hier auf dem Dynamo 95. Another reason was that the GEMA uh, uh, was getting too expensive for the channel, so the the guys who run the show uh, were asked to pay for each video clip uh, an amount to the GEMA, and back then. I still was learning my job. I didn't have much money. I just came out of school and uh, this was impo uh, impossible. Yeah, this was when this TV show stopped and I returned in, I think, 2006 or 2007 on the internet on Street Tip TV and went on from there. <laughs> I was still at the Bang Your Head Festival. Yeah, and I have the headliner here today, Judas Priest. What do you uh, like more, uh, playing in halls or playing open air festivals? Well, they've both got their own. They've both got their own types of. <laughs> yeah, this was basically the story about uh, this old TV show, Heavy Metal Battle, and I'm sure that the most important part of that were the first shows with the live bands that are called Cult these days. Uh, back then, uh, it was exciting, but uh, I. I didn't think that all these bands last for long, that uh, in, in 30 years people will still talk about Creator, Ed Lane, Outside and all these bands. 